And just as we watch that report, independent Senator Bernie Sanders has targeted Amazon for its role in widening the wage gap in the United States. Senator Sanders spoke Monday at an AFL-CIO Labor Day breakfast and called out Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos by name. I am not comfortable when one person, wealthiest guy in the world, Jeff Bezos, oh, is today seeing his wealth increase today. $250 million every single day, but there are thousands of workers who are employed by him who are earning wages so low they are on food stamps, Medicaid, and subsidized housing. Amazon responded to ongoing criticism from Sanders last week in a blog post, saying, quote, Amazon is proud to have created over 130,000 new jobs last year alone. In the U.S., the average hourly wage for a full-time associate in our fulfillment centers, including cash, stock, and incentive bonuses, is over $15 an hour before overtime. We encourage anyone to compare our pay and benefits to other retailers. This week, Senator Sanders is expected to unveil legislation requiring large employers like Amazon to cover the cost of federal assistance received by their workers. For more on working conditions at Amazon, we're going to Britain right now to speak with journalist James Bloodworth, who spent a month working undercover as a picker in an Amazon order fulfillment center and found workers were urinating in bottles because they were discouraged from taking bathroom breaks. His new book is Hired, Six Months Undercover in Low-Wage Britain. Welcome to Democracy Now! It's great to have you with us, James. Lay out what you found about Amazon. You've been tweeting nonstop about it hitting a trillion dollars, its CEO, its founding um, uh, head, Jeff Bezos, the richest man in the world. Yeah, I mean, it's, I've been tweeting about it and doing things like this in the media because it's really important, I think, to recognize what that huge wealth um, that Jeff Bezos and Amazon have accumulated, what that's built on. So before I went in 2016, I went into the I went into an Amazon warehouse here in the here in Britain. And before that, I mean, I, I used Amazon myself. It was it was kind of a first first place I'd go to buy books or DVDs. Say, um, I didn't really know much about what goes on in the warehouses. I kind of like like other people. I mean, I kind of I, I wouldn't say I idolized Jeff Bezos, but Bezos, but he was someone in the culture who was you know you had some respect for because he'd set up this organization that that so many of us used. Um, and while I went into the warehouse in 2016, um, it was, I mean, I was, I was really, really shocked um, by some of the things I saw there. Um, I'd, I've worked in warehouses before this. It's not as if I was afraid of hard work or, or as if this was, I'd never been in a kind of warehouse environment. Uh, but the atmosphere of the Amazon warehouse I worked in was what I imagine the atmosphere of a, of a low security prison would feel like. So, and again, that, that this isn't an exaggeration. So, for example, we had to be drug and alcohol tested before we started work, which I'd never had to have that done before. Um, we had to pass in and out of giant airport style security gates um, every time we even went to the toilet um, during the day. Uh, if, you, if you took a day off sick, you were given a disciplinary for that. And if you received six of these disciplinaries, you would effectively lose your job. Um, and this was taking a day off sick, even if you had a letter from the doctor, um, even if you phoned in beforehand to say that you were um, that you were going to be sick. Um, so if you took six days off sick, you would effectively lose your job. And this was the biggest employer in this town. Um, other things, I mean, people were afraid. You, people were receiving disciplinaries for taking toilet breaks. The productivity targets were so um, high that workers were afraid to go to the bathroom. I mean, a survey came out of the Amazon warehouse I worked in recently, which found that 74 percent of workers there, order pickers, were afraid to use the bathrooms because... Um, of the productivity targets. And, and, and one of this James, culminated uh, in James uh, one day I found a bottle of urine on the shelf. James Bloodworth, on the productivity issue, uh, the, uh, the the students that, at, in my class re reported from their interviews that pickers were required at, to pick 300 items per hour uh, from the various shelves in these huge warehouses. That comes to about 12, uh, 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 one item every 12 seconds. Yeah, I mean, it was it was astonishing. So, I mean, the first week I was working there, I was uh, an Amazon supervisor came around to find me and told me that I was in the bottom 10 percent of productivity. And um, and I'm someone who's relatively healthy. You know, I get I run, I go to the gym. I'm 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 still fairly reasonably young. Um, but and I and someone like me was was was, you know, at the bottom of the productivity pecking order. 
Um, so imagine what it's like if you're older, if you're if you're overweight at all, if you have a disability. It was just impossible to keep up with the with the targets. Um, and so what what happened was people were running around this huge warehouse, um, which is dangerous for a start. And then you can also you also received a disciplinary for running. So to hit your targets, um, if you didn't hit your targets, you received a disciplinary. Um, and but to hit your targets, you had to break the rules by running around, for which you'd receive another. Uh, disciplinary. So what happened was you have this huge turnover of staff. No one's hanging on to their jobs because people are just being fired for anything. And people people are also leaving then before their full kind of employment rights kick in. So this is agency staff. We're all agency staff. And uh, we, the, this turnover of staff, it's almost as if, you know, you can't prove it, but it's almost as if it's intentional. There's this, they, they try to get rid of you quite quickly because uh, then they can bring more people in who don't have the same employment rights as a full-time mm -hmm. employee. Very quickly, James, you said you found urine bottles, people afraid to go to the bathroom to take time. Yeah, so I mean, this 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 has kind of blown up since the book came out, but it was it was something that I saw when I was working in the Amazon warehouse. So one day, kind of one afternoon, walking walking around the you know the top floor of this huge warehouse, and yeah, I I found a, an empty Coca Cola bottle with with urine in it on the shelf. You know, yellow liquid, smelt it is is very clear straight away what it is, and you put two and two together, and this has happened because. <laughs> Uh, there's a, there's a, there's a climate of fear, and you're afraid if you go to the toilet, which can take five ten minutes. You know, huge warehouse through security, uh, and people are being told, being accused of taking so-called idle time um, by Amazon for doing this. Everything which takes away from productivity at Amazon is is seen as you're doing something wrong. We so have ten seconds. Really you, you, you have it. ten seconds. You said at one hair, a, a warehouse in the UK, Amazon workers called ambulances more than 115 times in three years. Yeah, that was the warehouse I worked in, yeah. Um, so that, that, that says it all, really, in, in my view. Well, we're going to leave it there, but we're going to do part two with you. We're going to post it online. We want to thank you for being with us. And Juan, thanks so much for that report. And again, we're going to link to your reporter's investigative pieces, the print pieces. They are multimedia talents um, at democracynow.org. James Bloodworth, UK-based reporter, author of Hired, Six Months Undercover in Low-Wage Britain. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez.